I've always made the joke that if you screw up an artwork enough, you could just call it abstract. The question is, if you're trying to make abstract art and you screw it up enough, well, I mean, then what is it? Crapstract. <laughs> Today, I'm going to attempt to create some abstract art, and if I fail, I hope you enjoy my crapstract art. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today I'm going to attempt to create some abstract art. And I don't want to take the mickey out of it, I really want to give it a proper go. That's something I try and do with these I try videos when I tried gouache or watercolour, when I tried calligraphy or even doodle art. I'm enjoying trying things I don't have a full understanding of or any experience with. And today I'm going to really just dive into abstract art. I am diving headfirst and in the deep end. I have no experience experience, I have very little understanding, I feel like I probably don't have the instincts because everything I do is so literal or cartoony or comic booky. So I'm really just going to rush into this and give it everything I've got. I have a dozen canvases and I'm going to plaster as many of them with as, as much creativity and sincere attempts at abstractism that I can. Ab abstractism? But more than just attempting it, I want to learn as much about it as I can to really, I don't know, see what it's all about and see what my interpretation of abstract art is or what I'm drawn to would be. So in doing this, I'm going to be getting some help from tutors and teachers on Skillshare.com. Skillshare are sponsoring this video and they're an amazing learning resource with over 25,000 classes in illustration, painting, graphic design, animation and loads more. Premium membership on Skillshare gives you unlimited access Access, so you can join in the classes and communities that are just right for you and your New Year's goals and resolutions. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving well into 2019. Now, Skillshare is very affordable. Undiscounted membership is only 10 bucks a month, but they have a great deal for you viewers. If you get in nice and quick, they have 500 free memberships for two months. And if you're one of those 500 lucky people to claim that link in the card in the description, you can have unlimited access to Skillshare and their many thousands of courses and join their over 7 million creatives on the platform learning today. I really just want to get my hands dirty and just learn by doing as I experience some of the lessons that I'll share with you and I'll also link to them in the description. Now before overwhelming myself with the pressure to create meaningful artworks in a medium I've never tried, I start off by experimenting with my paints and following some techniques outlined in some various Skillshare classes to loosen up and to relax and stretch my visual vocabulary. I really enjoyed Susan Carilla's courses. She had a few on abstract art, two in particular I found really helpful which covered palette knife and dripping techniques and dripping and scraping techniques. So I took a bit of inspiration from those techniques and those lessons and uh, tried to put it into practice. She she also had a great course on painting an abstract landscape from which I borrowed a technique later in my warm up exercise of just sort of painting almost petal like textures with a brush. For someone as literal with their art and unfamiliar with abstract as I am, the best place to start was a course by Kitty Winter called Basics of Art Abstract. As Kitty explains in her course, abstract is an umbrella category. Cubism, surrealism, modern art, minimalism, expressionism, informalism, postmodernism, figurativism. These can all be considered abstract art forms. Not always, but a lot of the time. And put simply, abstract art is sort of a spectrum. It can be defined as a visual language of shape, form, colour and line to create a composition which may exist with a degree of independence from visual references in the world. It's that word degree which denotes the spectrum. An abstract artwork may have a small degree of separation from visually representing literal reality or it may be entirely foreign from it. Both can be considered abstract art in the same way. There are no rules, but people are naturally inclined to like rules and things that are easy to understand. Therefore, a lot of people don't understand or even like abstract art. An abstract painting might, for example, be titled 
cat and it might look like a cat. It might also not look like a cat or look like nothing much at all. It might look bright and playful or messy and ugly or it might even look like a dog or a hot air balloon. No single one of these examples is right, nor is any of them wrong. In essence, almost anything that is unconventional in art can be identified as abstract. By the way, Robert Joyner's course on developing abstract landscape painting shows someone with a really experienced and relaxed hand in mixed media. It's really great to learn from and observe as an example of just how to run headfirst into your abstract painting. I found that one really interesting to watch. Abstract art can be as much about the intention and emotions surrounding the narrative of the artwork, its creation and its creator, as it is about technical execution or even visual appeal. For example, in this piece, I started with a word that I generated at random from an online word generator. The word was distance. So using that word as a cue, I created an artwork using two canvases and essentially just felt my way through it. I didn't have a template. I didn't have anything literally I was trying to convey, I just followed whatever naturally was expressed through me onto the canvases to make it feel like I was creating an artwork depicting distance. But that of course is relative to me and my interpretation, my expression of the word and what I was feeling at the time. Can it be considered good abstract art? That's entirely relative to me, to someone who knows my own lack of experience and insecurities, I'm inclined to feel it isn't. But removing my bias and context, there will be people maybe watching this video who feel a connection or sense of understanding from the piece or who infer a narrative or emotion because of it. And I'm sure many other people, maybe like yourself, who just simply don't, who see a bunch of lines or blobs or incomprehensible images. Both are correct. Neither is wrong. This is weird. <laughs> On the other hand, abstract art can be entirely removed from emotion, themes, narratives, and all that pretentious crap. It can be really quite practical. Victoria Shroven's Skillshare class, Creating Abstract Painting for Interior, really focuses on the design intent aspect of abstract art. Abstract art is often associated with somewhat incomprehensible pieces meant to represent emotions or figures to be displayed in fancy galleries and looked at with very serious expressions. But Victoria focuses on a more practical purpose of abstract art, to bring out colors or actors a design feature in a house or space. In many cases, a more literal painting or photograph in a home or other space can be too distracting or visually overwhelming. But abstract art doesn't have to be tied to an emotion or theme. It can just act as a way to set a spatial tone, accentuate a room with color, or create a mood to shape the space. Following some of the tips she outlined, and of course following my own abstract instincts, I created an artwork to suit the corner of my own office space where there was a little bit of that steel gray and charcoal hinted throughout the architecture and the room itself anyway with a subtle hint of green of what was on the shelves and I wanted to bring a bit more of that green in and uh, I guess echo a little bit of that dark charcoal industrial aesthetic in my painting and try and tie that uh, section of the room together and I'm pretty happy with how that turned out I think it, it works pretty well at the very least hopefully as an example of what Victoria was talking about in her class that abstract art can purely be a design focused thing now I've learned a lot about abstract art through my exploration of Skillshare and through creating a whole bunch of artworks today. So I thought to finish off, I would wrap up with a bit of an attempted self-portrait in abstract art. Again, I have no references, I have very little experience, but I've learned a little bit about how I prefer to work in the medium. And I think especially by this stage, after about six hours of creating paintings, I really have loosened up and I'm enjoying just expressing what happens through the artwork and without consciously or meticulously replicating reality, but just letting my reality, my abstract expressions and thoughts and feelings and impulses totally affect the artwork and the outcome. So this is it. This is the result of my first ever attempt at abstract art. Is it good? No. And yes, and kinda. And maybe. I guess that's sort of the mystery and subjective power of abstract art. Now I personally like some of these more than others. I definitely wouldn't hang 
a bunch of these on my wall, but there are a couple that I'm actually really proud of and quite impressed with the results of having never tried this before, especially because I'm generally quite rigid in how I create art. But at the same time, that rigidity and my natural heavy handedness with the way I do comics and cartoon characters has sort of traveled over to the way I do abstract art and I naturally am drawn to using very geometric shapes and strokes and heavy lines and, and very strong colors and weights. So it's been really fun. Today's been as much about learning about abstract art and the point of it as it has been learning about how I naturally make abstract art and what I'm drawn to and how I can express myself in the medium. I'm interested to know your thoughts. Are there any that you're drawn to? Are there any that just don't do it for you? I know you like the cat one. The second cat. This one. Cat 2. The catening. <laughs> it's been loads of fun trying and learning and if you want to have a go trying and learning something new and if you have New Year's resolutions and goals that you want to reach or skills you want to improve, I highly recommend checking out the sponsor of this video, Skillshare.com. I actually have a couple of courses on Skillshare myself, so if you're interested in the way that I present videos and do stuff, I have a course on how to be a YouTuber, which I tend to be pretty experienced in. So go check them out, I'll put the link to those in the description. Once again, all of the links to the courses that I followed along in this video are also in the description and they've been really useful. And I can't express enough how valuable and awesome Skillshare is as a learning resource. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope, although we have a variety of RT outcomes here today, that at least one of them tickles your creative fancy. I wanna thank you so much for watching and remind you, of course, to like this video if you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two and subscribe to Draw Jazza if you haven't yet and you wanna join more future RT goodness. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell ebooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there, and you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now, and until next time, I'll see you later.